And welcome back to Hannity. Now, it appears that Obama just doesn't like to make things easy on himself. Now, if you thought Chuck Hagel and John Brennan were controversial nominees, wait until you hear who the president is reportedly looking at to be the next labor secretary. It's rumored that Obama will choose Assistant Attorney General Thomas E. Perez. And just like his past picks, this one is filled with controversy. Now, Perez currently oversees the Civil Rights Division at the Justice Department. And under his leadership, the DOJ challenged state voter ID laws in Texas and South Carolina. Carolina. Now, opponents of the law say it restricts minority voting, but that's not all. We're also learning that a new report released this week by the department's inspector general slams Perez for misleading the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights about the lawsuit against the new Black Panther Party from back in 2008. Joining me now to expose more on this possible pick is syndicated columnist, author Michelle Malkin. Michelle, welcome back. Thanks for having me back, Sean. Well, why should the president not go for the most controversial radical people? Because they keep getting through. So I would expect him to pick his, his ideologue comrades, yeah, ideological uh, comrades. Is, yeah, this is completely expected, of course. And I think the ball is now in the court of the Republican Party to expose just how radical uh, this assistant attorney general is. And I've reported extensively on Tom Perez's history as uh, an extremist uh, race baiter. And um, I think most troubling from my perspective, uh, his longtime advocacy, advocacy, not of American workers, but of illegal alien workers. Uh, this is somebody who cut his teeth at Casa de Maryland, which is um, one of the most activist open border groups in the country. It's funded by um, government, uh, millions of dollars from the state of Maryland and local governments, as well as the radical left-wing billionaire George Soros's group, the Open Society yeah, Institute. But by the way, didn't they get five and million believe, dollars in government grants? They sure did. Five million from the government, um, untold millions more from Open Society Institute and left-wing progressive outfits like it. And my favorite, a million dollars from the late uh, uh, departed thug Hugo Chavez's Sitco, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, so th this is the money that's fueled this man, and he has dedicated his career to expanding illegal alien benefits, everything from uh, illegal alien and college tuition discounts, and uh, Casa de Maryland really can claim credit for the kind of DREAM Act deferrals and deportation waivers that are now policy uh, enacted by executive fiat by uh, the Obama administration, things like driver's licenses for illegal aliens and blocking local, state, and federal cooperation on uh, immigration enforcement and databases, which I think is, is key when you're talking about national security issues. What about and then, the as you mentioned, question. all of the labor departments, uh, all of the, uh, all of the uh, uh, stuff that uh, came out in this inspector general's report about uh, all of the monkeying around and the unethical behavior uh, by Tom Perez while he was uh, AAG under uh, the well, Obama administration's DOJ. Well, why don't we go over the inspector general's report and what they're basically saying, they're misleading the Commission on uh, Civil Rights about the lawsuit. It relates to the new Black Panther Party back in 2008. The, the, those were the guys standing outside the polling place in Philly, banging on batons and wearing military gear, as we are putting up on the screen here. Why don't you explain that? Yes. Yes, um, just to set the context, remember that these thugs were harassing not only uh, people who were voting at that Philadelphia precinct in the fall of, of 2008, but also harassing and hurling uh, poisonous racial epithets and demagoguery at people who were trying to monitor uh, the voting booth there. And it was thanks to brave whistleblowers within the DOJ, primarily J. Christian Adams and Christopher Coates, who was head of the voting rights section, who blew the whistle on all of the politicization um, and the monkeying around um, by many of these appointees, the politicization of uh, the, the decision to drop this case, even though under the Bush administration um, they had uh, agreed that, uh, that uh, these people were culpable for uh, violating voting rights laws. But, but he also refused um, to honor the subpoenas. This is an important thing because, yes. you know, thinking the position that he has, he has a, a, an obligation to do what is asked of him, and especially considering the position that he's in at DOJ. 
Yes, that's right. Instead of um, ensuring and protecting justice, this guy was obstructing it. And um, in addition to uh, refusing to honor the subpoenas, of course, there was um, uh, a lot of uh, the wording in the federal judge's decision um, that he had blatantly misled the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. And I think that the report that came out as a result of um, Representative Wolf's uh, um, requests here also underscores all of that. Um, and I think that the, the phrase uh, was polarization and mistrust. In, in, in essence, this is somebody who has deliberately, selectively enforced the law in, in an, a racially not neutral way. Um, and all of that is dangerous and has implications for uh, putting him in a position uh, to be head of the Department of Labor. All right, but considering we have Brennan has get, gotten through, Hegel's gotten through, any chances can be stopped? from your perspective? Well, you know, the, a lot of grassroots conservatives and people who are very familiar with Tom Perez's uh, record um, have been doing everything that they can to expose it. That's why I wrote my column on it, which you can find at michellemalkin.com, J. Christian Adams, uh, that PJ Media, uh, a number of people who uh, ha are so familiar with this guy's three-decade-long record of championing um, racially selective uh, enforcement of the law and also championing illegal alien workers over American workers. I, I think we need Republicans to do another filibuster and talk about uh, the implications of this. Why not? Where are you? Let, where's the crusaders for American workers and people who abide by the law? All right, Michelle Malkin, great report as always. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Take care. Coming up next.